this is what she looks like when you're all finished with her cap and gown. She looks really beautiful. I also show how to make the bamboo leaves. And on my website, www.helenmaycrochet.com, you'll find a free downloadable link for a diploma. And you, you can actually name your panda and then print it out. And there's a separate video tutorial for her cap and her gown, her graduation cap and gown. I show you a new crochet stitch that creates a diamond-like appearance for on the gown for the last two rounds. Now she also has adorable dimple covers that I used on mine, but those are optional. I talk more about that in the video tutorial. The back of the gown has two buttons. And I used a safety pin on the inside of the cap to hold it in place. But you could sew it in place too if you wanted to. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. You're also going to need a pair of 21 millimeter safety doll eyes. I'm using these gorgeous ones with the green sparkle around them. And then I like the safety doll eyes that have the plastic or the metal backing. The main white colored yarn that I chose is by Yarn Bee Tender Touch. It's a snow color. Here's some information about this yarn. So one skein of this style of yarn is 135 yards. For the black colored yarn, I chose the same style of yarn, Yarn B, Tender Touch, and the color is Shadow. I'm going to show you how to make your own nose, and I chose this Red Heart metallic colored black yarn. It has a nice sparkle to it, and again, I'm going to use this for the nose. I'm also going to use this yarn for the pads on the feet. You're also going to need a white felt. You can use a glitter felt if you want to that has a sparkle. This one is just a plain white. You just need a little bit of it so barely any of it's going to show behind the eye. And this is the one that I'm using, some of my leftover. I find that these Dritz Home upholstery needles work great for the larger amigurumi and it comes in four different sizes in this pack and I usually use my 10 or 12 inch upholstery needle. For this one I'm going to be using my 12 inch upholstery needle. For this crochet project you're going to need three, four skeins of the Tender Touch Snow. Four skeins and this is three ounces, 135 yards. And this is how much you have left over of the fourth skein. Then for the black yarn or the shadow colored yarn, it's the same amount of yarn. You're going to need three skeins of this yarn. And this is how much you have left over of the black colored yarn. If you used your sparkle yarn, you're only going to need one skein of that. We're going to start with your snow colored yarn and we're going to start with the snout. So you're going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Now we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial and then I'll let you finish the rest of them. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. 
So you're going to start with a chain of 15. So go ahead and finish a chain of 15. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So here's the hook. You count back one, two, go right into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, then you're going to make a single crochet. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. Now, we started with a starting chain of 15 stitches and now we're working on the first row of single crochets and when you finish your first row of single crochets you're going to have a stitch count of 14 and the reason why you're going to have a stitch count of 14 even though the starting chain was a chain of 15 is because you made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So for beginners, I recommend counting your stitches to make sure that you have the correct stitch count. And again, after we finish this row of single crochets, you should have a stitch count of 14. And then come back. So now you should have a stitch count of 14. Now each of these blocks is an inch on my board here. So mine measures just over three inches, about three and a half inches in length. For those of you that are using a different style of yarn. So now we're going to move up to the next row, which would be row two. So you're going to chain one. Turn your work. Now this first chain one counts as your first stitch for this next row. And then you'll see this little upslope right here. That's directly under your chain one. So you're not going to work into that same stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So you go right into that next stitch over. Bring up a loop and make sure you grab both loops of the next stitch. Bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And remember that first chain one counts as a stitch. So you want to make sure you still have a stitch count of 14 after you finish this second row. So you're just going to go right into every stitch grabbing both loops, making your single crochet. And you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch across. And like I said, after you finish the second row, you should have a stitch count of 14 still, if you worked it correctly. So now I have a total of 14 stitches still, and I just finished row two. Now we need three more rows worked the same way. And then that'll bring us to row Five. We'll finish row five. So this was row one. We just finished row two. And then we need row three, four, and five. So three more made the same way. So you just chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across, maintaining your stitch count of 14. And then come back. So now this is how my work looks and it measures approximately three and a half centimeters so far. And now we're going to start forming a triangular top portion. So now after you finish that last single crochet, we're going to start working on row six now, and you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So this time you don't have the chain one, 
so there won't that chain one won't count as a stitch you're going to be making a single crochet into the next stitch so that will be your first stitch and what you're doing is you're going to decrease the number of stitches in this row by one because you didn't chain one so now that counts as our first stitch for this row row six go into the next stitch and make a single crochet and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across for row six and after you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 13 now we're going to move up to row seven so again you're not going to chain one you're just going to turn your work make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you're going to have a stitch count of 12 so one less because we didn't start the row with a chain one so we did not chain one and now we're making one single crochet in every stitch back across which will bring us to a stitch count of 12 when we finish row 7. This is how my work looks so far. Now we're going to move up to row 8. So you're not going to chain 1, you're just going to turn your work and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 11. So row 8 has a stitch count of 11. Now we're going to move up to row 9. So you're not going to chain 1. You're going to turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish row 9, you should have a stitch count of 10. So now you should begin to see the gradual triangular shape that you're creating. And now we're going to move up to row 10. So you just turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 9. So now we're going to make two more rows. We're going to move up to row 11. Just turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And you should have eight stitches after finishing this row. And now our last row. So now we're on row 12. Turn your work single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of seven so now my snout is approximately three inches in height and I just finished the last row now we're going to start working in rounds So the first thing you're going to do is chain one and then grab your yarn marker, place it right where you left off and then you're going to evenly space one single crochet in every stitch along the side. So because you're working alongside the rows, you're not going to have the stitches easily seen to work in. So you're just going to evenly space them down the side. And then the yarn marker will help you keep track of the rounds. So you just go along the side and if you need to you can kind of jiggle the hook left and right to get the hook to go through the stitch along the side and then bring up a loop 
and then make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced along the side all the way to the corner. And then once you get to the corner, we're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So in the corners only, you're making two single crochet into the same stitch. And then that will turn towards the bottom of the snout. And then the bottom of the snout, you can see the stitches, so it's a lot easier. So then you just go right into the next stitch, grabbing both loops of the stitch, and then just make one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the next corner. And you're just and then in the corner, of course, you make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're just going to make a single crochet evenly spaced on the opposite side, and then one single crochet in every stitch along the top, back to the yarn marker and then come back. For the loose yarn end, what I did was I just crocheted behind the loose yarn end to bury it as I crocheted. So you evenly space on the opposite side. This is how my work looks so far. And then when I get to the loose yarn end, I just crochet behind it to bury it. So now I'm back to where I started and for mine I have a total of 42 stitches in the round. Now if you're off by one or two stitches that's okay because when we evenly space stitches along the sides sometimes you may have one or two more or less than I do and that's okay that's not critical for this point. But now you do need to maintain your stitch count for each of the subsequent rounds. So for whatever stitch count you got for this round, you should have the same stitch count for these next rounds that we make. So now just take and move your yarn marker up, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around. And then just make one single crochet in every stitch around for five rounds. One, two, three, four, five. Then you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew the snout on the head. So I'm going to pull a little bit more through. Then you can cinch that knot down, remove your yarn marker, and then you just have to decide which side you want for your right side. I'm going to turn mine out, inside out, and I want this side for my right side. And then the smaller part of the snout goes up towards the top of the head, and then the wider part of the snout goes towards the bottom of the head. And now I'm going to show you how to embroider the nose. So now you would want to take your tapestry needle with the black colored yarn that you're using for the nose. I'm using my black metallic sparkle colored yarn. And I have the right side facing me of the snout and then I have the smaller edge of the snout facing tor up towards the top and then the wider portion is at the bottom. Then you're going to you can kind of see the outline of the border of the snout. So you want to kind of envision where you want to place your nose. So I'm going to be making my nose across the top about one and a half rows down from that border. 
here. And then I'm also, here's the side of the border, so I'm about a stitch in from the side. And then I'm just going to come up with my black yarn and make sure you leave a little bit of yarn on the inside of the snout for tying a knot. And then you're going to go across and you want to go back in at about the same distance from the side as you did from this side. So you want about a centimeter from both sides. And then of course you want to go in the same row as the other side. And then you just go right back in. I'm trying to see if I have it over enough. I'm going to go about right. Yeah, about right there is good. Make sure I'm even on both sides. And then I'm going to go back in. And then you want to tie a knot on the wrong side with the loose yarn in. And make sure that you don't tangle the long end that you left for sewing. Looks like I'm about to tangle it. So make sure you don't tangle that part of it. You want to keep that out of the way. And now you can tie a knot on the inside. So on the wrong side. Make sure that when you're tying your knot that you don't pull it too tight and then mess up your design on the front. Then you want to go straight from the inside. You want to come out to the right side and I'm coming out about, let's see, here's half a row here and then two rows here. So two and a half rows straight down and right in the center. And then come back out. And you can see how I'm holding the yarn off to the side from the snout so I don't tangle it up with my black yarn as I'm making the nose. Then you're going to go up to one of the sides of the top of the nose. So you can see we're making an upside down triangle. Then you can, since I'm on the wrong side, you'll come up from the wrong side to the right side on the other side of the triangle to finish the other side of the triangle. And then you just go right in at the bottom. So now you have the shape of the nose. Then you just take and go into the center of the triangle and you're just going to fill the triangle so that there's no white portion showing. So you just go in and out the inside of the triangle until it's completely filled. Then after the nose is completely filled, then you're going to come up from the bottom of the triangle and then go straight down two rows for the mouth. Then you're going to come up about two stitches over and two rounds down at an angle. And then back in the center of the mouth. And then for the opposite side, again two stitches over and then at the same level. and then back in the center. Then you can take and tie a knot on the inside. Make sure you don't tie it too tight so you don't mess up the front design. And then you can tie multiple knots just to make sure it won't come undone. And then just trim the loose yarn ends. And then this is how it should look when you're finished. Looks good. Then you can set this aside while we make the head. 
So for the head, you're going to start with your white colored yarn or snow colored yarn. And we're going to start with the magic circle. So you're going to take your yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb, just like this. Then take your crochet hook, go right under those two loops around the middle fingers, loop the yarn, and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So you go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. Then you take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can always close it more later. Then let go and grab the loose yarn end here and then pull on that. Then you can turn your work because we're going to be working in rounds. And then you can see your first stitch in the round. You're going to take your crochet hook. You're going to go into that first stitch in the round. Make sure you grab both loops. Bring up a loop and then you're going to make a single crochet and you're going to make one more single crochet in the same stitch and you're going to be making two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So, so far we have two. Go into the next stitch and then make two single crochet into the same stitch and that brings our stitch count to four. And you're going to repeat this all the way around until you have a stitch count of 12. And then come back. So now I have 12 stitches in the round. If you need to close the center of your magic circle, just turn your work over and then just tug on that loose yarn end on the back and then that closes up the center of the circle. Then you're going to need your loose yarn end as a yarn marker. Go ahead and place it right where you left off and now we're going to be making a bunch of increase rounds and we're going to be making these increase rounds in chronological order until we have the size that we need for the head. So for this first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch. And you just keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 18 stitches in the round after completing that round and I'm not going to give you the stitch count for every round because all you have to do is add six to your previous round and that's because we started with the magic circle with six single crochet. So now for every round that you make just add six and you get your new stitch count. So I know that when I finish this next round, because I have 18 in this round, add 6 to that, that means that I should have 24 stitches after completing this next increase round. So for this next increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off, and you're going to make one single crochet 
into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the next increase round just move the yarn marker up to where you left off and then you want to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then one single crochet into six and then two single crochet into the next stitch so you can see how we're making it gradually larger and larger so I'm at one single crochet into six and then two single crochet into the next stitch and for different style yarn as well as different style hook it can change the size so if you're using a different style of yarn, I want to show you how large mine is at this point. So at this point, I'm about three inches in width and height. So that's with this style of yarn and this crochet hook. So now you know how to increase, so you know where to stop if you need to, because your increase number may be smaller or larger depending on the style of yarn. So with this style of yarn and this size hook, I'm at one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now for the last increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around so now I just finished the one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and I have a total of 60 stitches in the round and the measurement is about 11 centimeters across and 11, 11 centimeters diameter so now go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around. And you're going to repeat that one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of five rounds. So right now I have four so I'll need one more. So five rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you're going to move the yarn marker up and make one increase round of one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now this is how your work should be looking. After you've finished that increase round, you should have 66 total stitches in the round. Then you're going to move the yarn marker up and then make one single crochet in every stitch around for only four rounds. So four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then the last increase round is one single crochet into ten stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and make one single crochet in every stitch for eight rounds. So eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then we're going to make a decrease round. You're going to move your yarn marker up and then make one single crochet into ten stitches. After you make one single crochet into ten stitches, then you're going to single crochet two stitches together which is also known as a decrease stitch. 
So you go right into the next stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three stitches for a decreased stitch or single crochet two stitches together. Then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into ten stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Now you should have 66 total stitches in the round. Then just move the yarn marker up and then just make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch. Then move the yarn marker up and you're going to make one decrease round. So you're going to make one single crochet into the next nine stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into nine stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Now you should have 60 stitches in the round Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make a decrease round again. So you're going to make one single crochet into eight stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into eight stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Now you should have 54 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then just make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now you can remove the yarn marker and leave a large loop where you left off because we're now ready to make the face. So this is how the shape of your head should be and I'm going to be showing you how to make the black patch for the eye. And the black patch should fit, line up with the bottom of the head and still give you enough room for the top of the head for your panda design. So I'm going to show you how to make this black patch now. So you're going to take your black colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook and now you're going to make a chain of four. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. After you finish your chain of four, we're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you count back one, two, take your crochet hook, go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make a single crochet in each of the stitches back across and that will give you a stitch count of three. So now you have a stitch count of three and your stitch count is going to be very important so make sure you keep track of your stitch count. So now for this next row, we're going to increase the stitch count by two. So right now we have a stitch count of three. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. That first chain one counts as your first stitch for this row. Now you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. So go into the same stitch, 
bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. So that's your second stitch. Go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. That's your third stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the last stitch. So you go into that last stitch and make a single crochet. And then make one more in the same stitch. And then you'll finish this row with a stitch count of five. So now for the next row we're going to increase the stitch count by two again. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the same stitch for a stitch count of two, one single crochet into the next stitch, stitch count of three, one single crochet into the next stitch for four, next stitch for five, and then the last stitch will be two single crochet into the same stitch. And then that will give you a stitch count of seven after finishing this row. Now for the next row, we're also going to increase again by two, a stitch count of two. So far we have a stitch count of seven, so you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the same stitch for two, single crochet into the next stitch for three, next stitch for four, next stitch for five, next for six, next for seven, and then two single crochet into the last stitch. And that will give you a stitch count of nine after finishing that row. Now we're going to maintain the stitch count for three rows. So right now we have a stitch count of nine. For the next three rows we want to maintain that stitch count of nine. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, but this time you're not going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. And that chain one counts as your first stitch for this first row. So you're going to go into the next stitch for two, next for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we need two more, maintaining a stitch count of nine. So you chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch back across for a stitch count of nine. And then our last row with a stitch count of nine you chain one, turn your work, and then just repeat. One single crochet in every stitch for this last row with a stitch count of nine. So now we're going to increase the stitch count by two. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the same stitch for two, and then one single crochet into the next stitch for three, next stitch for four, next stitch for five, six, seven, 
8, 9, and then you need two stitches, two single crochet in the same stitch, and now you should have a stitch count of 11. Now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 11 for the next two rows. So you chain one, turn your work, and this time you're going into the next stitch over. So that first chain one counts as your first stitch, next stitch for a single crochet, for your second stitch, next stitch for your third, fourth, fifth, Sixth, seven, eight, nine, and if it doesn't add up right, you can just make two because you should have eleven. It's ten and eleven. So make sure you have eleven. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then chain 1, turn your work, and then you're going to maintain a stitch count of 11 again. So you go into the next stitch for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So now we're going to increase this stitch count by 2. So you chain 1, turn your work. You're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch for 2, the next stitch for 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then you want two single crochet into the last stitch, twelve, thirteen. Now we're going to increase the next row by two stitches again, so we're going to ha we should have two additional stitches. We have 13 stitches now which will we'll end up with 15. So you chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the same stitch for two, next stitch for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then two into the last stitch for fifteen. So now you should have a count of fifteen. Now you're going to maintain the stitch count of fifteen for three rows. So you chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch for two. So you want to one single crochet in every stitch, maintaining your stitch count of 15. So now I have a stitch count of 15. I want two more rows with a stitch count of 15. So you chain one, turn your work, and then you make a single crochet into the next stitch for two and then one single crochet in every stitch across, maintaining your stitch count of 15. So now our last row of 15, just chain one, turn your work, one single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch across, maintaining your stitch count of 15 for this last row of a stitch count of 15. So now, this is how your work should look and we're going to start decreasing the stitch count now by one. So I just finished the last row with a stitch count of 15. 
Now I want a stitch count of 14. So you're not going to start with a chain one. You're just going to turn your work, go into the next stitch, and make a single crochet. And that will be your first stitch for this row. And then you just make one single crochet in every stitch across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 14. So for the next two rows, we're going to be repeating this until we get down to a stitch count of 12. So this next row is going to be a stitch count of 13. So after you finish the, this row where you have 14 stitches, you just turn your work, go into the next stitch over to make your first single crochet, and then make one single crochet in every stitch across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 13. So now you should have a stitch count of 13. Now we're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over to make your single crochet, and then one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 12. So now you should have a stitch count of 12. We're going to maintain the stitch count of 12 for one row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for two stitches, next stitch for three, and then just keep repeating one single crochet in every stitch across, maintaining the stitch count of 12. So now you should have a stitch count of 12 still, and for the rest we're going to keep turning our work until we get down to a stitch count of 7. So right now we have a stitch count of 12. You're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over, and make your first single crochet, and then make one single crochet in every stitch across, and when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 11. So now you should have a stitch count of 11. Go ahead and turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across, and when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 10. So now you should have a stitch count of 10. Go ahead and turn your work, go into the next stitch over for your single crochet, and then make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of, let me see, I already forgot, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a stitch count of nine. So now you should have a stitch count of nine. Go ahead and turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then one single crochet in every stitch across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of eight. So now you should have a stitch count of eight. Turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across, and when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of seven. So now we have a stitch count of seven. You're going to turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, one single crochet in every stitch back across, except the last stitch. So here's your second third, fourth, and fifth. Then you're going to slip stitch into the sixth. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this patch onto the head. So now you have your finished eye patch and you need two of these, so make two of them. And then I'm going to show you how to cut out the white felt for the safety doll eye. So now you just want to grab your white felt and then I cut out a shape out of the felt and this measures two and a half centimeters across or two and a half centimeters in diameter, and I do have the flat edge here. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut a hole into the towards the flat portion of the cutout. And you want it about two millimeters away, two to three millimeters away. So you just kind of fold it up and then take your scissors and then you just want to cut a little V. Be careful that you don't cut all the way to the edge. You just want enough of an opening to fit the safety doll eye through. So if you need to open it up a little bit more you can. Then take your safety doll eye and then put it in. And then you can take and trim it if you need to. So here you can see I have a little edge there. So I'm going to take my scissors and just trim it so that it's more rounded. And then you can have as much of the white portion showing or as little as you want. So you can take and trim it if you want to. So about two to three millimeters is good to have. So now you want to place the eyes onto the black portion or the black portion that goes behind the eyes. And you want to make sure that where you finished off is towards the inner part of the eye. So on this side you can see where I finished off is towards this side and then so is this one. And then that just gives you the shape that you want for the eye so it's not it doesn't look funny. You want the shape to be symmetrical on both sides. And then I lined up my eyes so that here I have about there's two, four, so right with that top, bottom under the fourth row is where I lined up the top of the eye. And then here is the bottom of the eye. So here's four, and then there's two, four, about six rows here that take up the eye. And then wherever you place, and then between the angle here, and the eye is about one to two millimeters. And you want to make sure that however you place the eye on one patch, you have to make it exactly the same on the other patch. And then make sure that they're lined up and that you like the way the white portion looks. And then once you're happy with how the eyes look, then on the back, you can place your safety doll latch. Then you can take and position the patch on the front of the head. So make sure that the loop where we left off on the head is on the back of the head. And then you're going to line up the bottom of the patch with just above the last row. Remember, we still need to close the head, so you don't want to sew over the stitches of that last row. So just above the last row is the bottom of the black patch and then you're going to sew with your tapestry needle all around the border. Make sure that your patch is straight, facing straight up on the head before you sew it in place. Now this part is critical. Before you sew the next eyepiece on, you have to make sure that both eyes are centered. They have to line up. You don't want one eye up here and then one eye here. So you have to make sure that the eyes are lined up and you can use the center line to help you make sure that they're lined up on the top and the bottom. And then also you want to make sure that your spacing is good between the two portions of the black patches. So for mine I have approximately four stitches between or it's about two and a half centimeters between the portions that are closest to each other on the black patches. Then you can take your snout 
put some craft stuffing inside. Don't worry if you don't get a lot of stuffing. You can always complete or add more stuffing before you completely sew the snout in place. And then you want to line up the snout just under the eyes. Make sure that your nose is centered between the eyes and then just sew all around the border of the snout with your white or same colored yarn as the snout. And this is what mine looks like after sewing the snout in place. You can see how the nose is straight. And then I have about the same amount of black portion showing here under this eye as I do on this eye. So those are all things that you have to keep in mind as you sew your snout in place. And then the bottom is straight. So you can see. And then you can see that I went a little bit higher for the bottom of the snout than I did for the black portion behind the eye. So all of these things are important for making sure that your face looks symmetrical. Now you can return to the back of the head to finish our decrease rounds. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you can start to add craft stuffing and you want to shape the head as you decrease. So you're going to add stuffing as you decrease and continue to shape the head as you close. Make sure that you don't overstretch your stitches as you stuff. So you want just enough to maintain your stitch distance so you don't see the craft stuffing through. And then for the next decrease round, just make one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now you should have 42 stitches in the round after that last decrease round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then go ahead and make one single crochet into five stitches and then your single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then make one single crochet into four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you can see that you're almost closed. Go ahead and remove that yarn marker and then you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost completely closed. And then you're just going to slip stitch closed. So you just keep making single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. I'll probably make one more and then I'm going to slip stitch it closed. So now you can see that I'm almost closed. I'm just going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And you're just going to repeat that until the head is completely closed. And then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now we're going to go ahead and bury the loose yarn end. Just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end and then just go right next to where you finished off and then come out anywhere on the bottom of the head and then that will pull your loose yarn end through and then you can go ahead and just trim 
your loose, loose yarn end.